So welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. I'm Simon Hodgkins and I'm delighted to be joined by Ashwin Chaco. You're very welcome to the podcast, Ashwin. Let's begin by asking you to introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about your journey and what you're focused on and what sort of areas you're involved in to our international audience today. So over to you, Ashwin. Hi, Simon. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. As I said, as you said, my name is Ashwin Chaco and I am a positively playful author, illustrator, and motivational speaker. So my primary focus is to champion creativity. And I like to do that through books, through workshops, through um, speaking. And so everything that I produce comes out of, of a place of bringing joy and encouragement in everything I do. Well, I, lo I love that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So you've you've illustrated, authored a number of books yourself. You're obviously heavily involved in design, typography, illustration, and creativity. Let's rewind. Where does all that come from? Is that something that you've just always had in you? Or how did you fall into that kind of work? Yeah, so um, as far back as I can remember, I've always drawn. Um, my mama... My mother retells the story of me at the age of five or six, asking her if I could draw for a living. Growing up in India, that felt like an impossibility. So I had resigned myself to become becoming one of those starving artists. Uh, so I, I finished high school. I was always interested in art. Um, I wasn't sure what sort of career I would have. Um, and I ended up studying visual communications. So that was before it, that was graphic design as a thing. So visual communications as a whole. And then a new course had just come out called animation. And so I ended up switching courses from visual communication to animation. I did my degree in that. Having finished animation, I realized I never want to work <laughs> <laughs> animation unless it was in the pre-production stage so I ended up going from there into graphic design um, in an ad agency and so from there my career started to build I moved from graphic designer to art director and then six years ago once I moved to Ireland I finally started to realized that I could actually make illustration a career and so then it was a slow transition from uh, building a new network in Ireland. And then finally in 2019, I said, okay, I'm going to switch over to illustration full time. So you, you're truly living your dream now, Ashwin, or back yes. to when your mom, your mother back in India said, do you think you can make a living from this? You've actually proven that you can, and uh, you're doing something that you're truly passionate about. So that's a wonderful story. And um, I, I also want to pick up on something that you said, you know, back in, in India, you thought that that was merely a pipe dream. You were going to be this, you know, in quotes, in quotes, starving artist. Um, and it, it's amazing, isn't it, how that journey uh, has arrived. So maybe could you share with with our audience maybe some of the things that you have produced, particularly in your own um publications and authorings i think that would be useful for people to understand sure so in in 2019 is when i actually did my first self-published book uh, it was called keep at it and it was a reflection of the last 10 years as a freelancer and so this book kind of encapsulated ideas and thoughts and uh, advice i'd give myself when i first got it got started freelancing and this book actually came out of a personal project because in 2018, there was the boom for hand lettered typography, right? And I saw that and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could get hired to do hand lettering uh, as a job because it seems really cool and the work uh, looks like it's, it's going to be fun. And so I set myself a personal project to create a piece of hand lettering every day for 30 days. At the end of the 30 days, 
And, and I announced this on Instagram, so I had to keep myself accountable to that. Uh, so at the end of the 30 days, I realized there was a pattern in the the typographical pieces that I created. They were all reflective of, um, uh, you know, the, the graphic designer or the freelance journey. And so then I put it together as a book and started putting it out to art directors. And this... Uh, then started getting me hired to do typography as a as a job as along with my illustration. So that was the first publication I did. Um, in 2018, prior to that, I had really wanted to get into children's books, and I'd written a children's book, and I'd sent it out to all the publishers. Six months go by, no answer. One year goes by, I get one letter. And it's a no. And that was sort of devastating at that point. Um, but finally, in 2020, the whole world paused. And I, and I had a moment to consider, what, do I, what is the sort of impact I want to make? Because I spent all this time pursuing the dream. Now that I had the dream, what was I going to do with it? What sort of work was I going to produce? What sort of impact did I want to make uh, in the world? What is the legacy I wanted to leave? And this then took me down a journey of really digging deep to find out what is my purpose? What is my why? And how would that inform everything I produce from that day forward? And so this was sort of like um, the crucial moment in, in my career because it completely shifted the type of work I was producing from that time forward. It was sort of my wizard moment where, you know, the uh, Gandalf comes and knocks on the door and uh, he says, you know, <laughs> there's this adventure out here. And, and that shifted the direction of my my career and my life. And so the conclusion of the time, um, I was able to figure out that my purpose, my true purpose is to bring joy and encouragement in everything I do. And so then this shaped how uh, I decided my career was going to go forward. There's three areas I wanted to focus in on within that. First one was um, to create children's books. The second was to be a motivational speaker. And the third was to create commercial illustrations. And so the three of them work together, but are their own little separate niches as well. And so then I was able to map out, okay, in order to start getting hired to do these things, I need to start doing something to get there. And so for the motivational speaking, I started doing one little one minute clips on IGTV at the time. Um, and it used to be called Pep Wednesday. So I gave a little pep talk about creativity. And this slowly over time compounded and I started getting hired to do little small talks here and there. And last year I got to do a huge talk at the Birmingham Design Festival. So it was the compound effect of making the choice, the plan, and then moving forward. The same thing, a similar situation with my children's books. So now that I decided that I wanted to be a children's book author and illustrator, I had to do something about it. And so I was like, I'm not going to wait for permission. I'm going to self-publish my first children's book. And it was called What Wondrous Shapes We Are. And it came from a place where um, that summer, I'd overheard my daughter having this conversation with the neighbor kid. Because she's half Indian, half Irish, when she, in the summer, she tans, basically. And so the kid comes up to her and says, oh, you're black. And she's like, no, 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 I'm not black. Uh, my daddy's chocolate, my mommy's vanilla, and I'm caramel. And so <laughs> this really got me thinking, okay, how do I have this conversation about race, about the fact that we all come in different shapes, sizes, and colors, but in the end, th what really matters is that we're people and that we treat each other right. And so that was how What Wonder Shapes came about. And so that book then... Um, allowed me access into the children's book industry. I started doing uh, talks and, and little um, things at festivals. And this then attracted publishers to come to me versus me pursuing the publisher. And I got 
a couple of book deals out of there, that position. So um, I said, uh, all in all, it was basically the process of finding my why allowed me to realize that I needed to spend time in specific um, clear steps. And that then allowed me to open up the career that I always wanted. Wonderful. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us that insight. And it, 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 what fascinates me is you kind of had the career, you'd achieved that discussion that your mom had with you early on in life. But then when I suppose the world changed a little bit, didn't it, a few years ago, you reflected on that and you thought, well, am I actually doing what I'm passionate about? What? Do, how do I want to reposition this? What do I really want to focus on? Which is wonderful because many people don't take that time, you know, and maybe that time was forced on us, but, but we, you obviously have... I suppose the word that people use a lot is pivot or change their strategy or really just really thought about the direction that you wanted the rest to go in. Um, and it's great to hear about your, you know, speaking at that huge event, uh, particularly to peers in the design industry, that must've been wonderful. And to be successful as a, as a children's author now to be publishing these books, which have very meaningful and important messages in them um, of, you know, that sort of, openness inclusion acceptance um and promoting uh, i suppose positivity uh, to some degree um which is a long way i suppose from you know ad campaigns designing packaging and uh, you know <laughs> getting the lettering right or working on editorial for example yeah and i know you still do a lot of design work and it's kind of it's kind of running through your blood right i mean it's just in there it's part of who you are um but what do you what do you love about what you do now? Just to just to build on that, like what what does it mean to you now to be in that position? I suppose to me, what I really love is the potential for impact that it's going to have, and the generative effect that it's going to create. Hopefully, that's my hope. Uh, that the books then inspire other creators to make their careers out of it or the books help children to deal with um, their fears so everybody feels fear was allow them to conquer their fear and say it's okay to have fear but then they can move forward and be brave to be brave is not to be unafraid but to move forward even when it's scary and so um, my hope is the books the talks encourage creators who most often are fighting themselves because our biggest enemies are our self-doubt and our fear and the words we allow people to put upon ourselves. And so this pre prevents the potential that creatives have to impact the world. And I really believe that, you know, artists and creators shape the cultures we live in. Because if you, if you think about throughout history, if I say Renaissance, what comes to your mind? It comes uh, Da Vinci, uh, all the artists come to your mind. When I say Baroque, you think of architecture, you think of the artwork of that time. And so each period is very much defined by the arts. And so we as creators have that responsibility to shape the culture we live in. And so for me, the impact of creating work that will hopefully change culture is what makes me super excited about uh, the place I'm and and the position I'm in at the moment. I like that a lot. That's really, really important. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of talk, isn't there? And talking to people doing this, uh, the global discussion, some people follow their, their, um, an enforced career path. You know, they feel as though they have to be the doctor, the lawyer, the, you know whatever it is um and sometimes often the arts and the creative side of things um isn't as as heavily looked on i know in the uk for example at the moment there's a huge push towards more mathematics i'm not saying i mean i love maths there's nothing wrong with it but but some people are just 
different and it's that it's that difference that helps drive that culture and i think when you think about the arts and the humanities and the creativity side of things you're right because it really does change culture change opinions and it's such an important element to who we are around the world so thank you for sharing that ashwin um just to change gear a little bit uh, i want to ask about the kind of things that uh you take in that you learn that you absorb yeah. so obviously you write and produce and illustrate you do your speaking etc but when you take on board information are you a do you read a lot yourself do you just take inspiration from other areas are you an audio book person do you like the written book do you read for pleasure for business do you not read at all you just scour the internet from morning noon and night so how does that work for you yeah, I have always been a visceral reader. Um, when I was a kid, it was a way for me to escape into uh, a different world of fantasy that I could relive. Uh, but now growing up, it's how I learn. Um, the books provide information inside perspective. This is why I advocate for books and I make books because I know that reading a book can shape change your perspective on the world. It can open up new avenues. And then from there, you can become something you might might have thought impossible, right? Uh, so at the moment, I primarily read books around business and creativity and building habits. Um, so like Atomic Habits is a book that I'm reading right now. Hype Yourself by Lucy Ren Renner. Um, uh, James is made, um, made by James did a little um, book about himself and his career path and so it's always fascinating to read other creative people's stories uh, and see where they're coming from how similar your paths are what lessons you learn from them Chris Doe's book um, A Pocket Full of Dough is really good as well, short but insightful. Um, so the books I've chosen to read at the moment are ones to improve my ability to be better at business because that was an area that was completely lacking as an artist and as a creator. And I think this is something that a lot of us creators are told. You're an artist, you're no good at business, you stay in your lane, we'll do our thing. And so it's it's a, a process of unlearning that fact that actually we as creators are better positioned to run businesses because we're able to pivot and solve problems and have a unique perspective on how to approach a problem. And uh, so it's unlearning the fact that we can't do business and relearning how do we do it and this then opens up our ability to better negotiate how uh, we structure our fees, how we interact with clients. It shifts the par dynamic from, you know, oh, the client's up here and, and you're down here to actually we're equal partners and we're both bringing value. Yeah, so I'll, I thought I'd share just some of the, the ones I've found really helpful for for creators trying to build a career in this. So this is marketing by Seth Godin really opened up my perspective on what marketing really is. You know, I this, this quote of his um, that really gets me and shifted my perspective completely. He says, effective marketers don't begin with a solution, with a thing that makes them more clever than everyone else. Instead, we begin with a group we seek to serve, a problem they seek to solve and a change they seek to make. And so this shifted my idea of marketing from this like, you know, gross salesy person <laughs> trying to give you something that you don't want to somebody who's trying to solve your problem, uh, to make your life better, to help your dream come through through the product that you might have. Um, the coaching habit is great for, um, you know, just understanding how to listen to people. Because uh, I think this is something that we all struggle with is being good listeners. And the better you're able to listen and ask questions to dig deeper, the better you'll be able to figure out what your client really wants and how you can best serve them. Um, Stories That Stick by Kendra Hall, great for 
learning how to tell uh, better stories, the power of storytelling and how to approach that. Um, Fact Perfection by James Victory. He is just a brilliant writer, great personality, and he's got so many nuggets in here. So really encouraging and lots of fun to read. Uh, emo Sorry Spock, Emotions Drive Business by Adam Morgan. Again, excellent for understanding how the brain works and how we go about uh, creating ideas. So a lot of times, uh, a big problem that we as creators face is our inability to repeat an action. And so he talks about building systems, how our brain is broken up into the fast system and the slow system and learning to understand that. As soon as you understand it, then you can make a shift. But if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what to change, right? And then most recently, I just got Atomic Habits, which I'm reading at the moment, which is fascinating again, how to build better habits. That's so, great, yeah. Ashwin. Yeah, there's some there's some really great books there and there's some absolute gems of information in the ones that you've shared from Atomic Habits backwards. You started talking about Seth Golden. I've been reading Seth for many, many years and back to his Purple Cow uh, yeah. <laughs> book and Lynchpin and that one that you held up first, which was um, This Is Marketing. Yeah. Uh, that's almost sort of like the de facto textbook for how to do effective marketing. It's actually a great book. Um, but thank you for sharing all of those. They're all wonderful in their own rights. And uh, it's great for our audience to get a little insight into the kind of things that you're reading. So thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, though, is about inspiration and maybe about people that you admire. Now, that could be as far back as your early childhood, or it could be somebody you bumped into recently. But when I ask you the question, who inspires you, who do you admire, or a particular character trait even, doesn't if you know, maybe a particular person or persons. But when I throw that question at you, what immediately springs to mind? Yeah, um, so going back to when I was a little kid in India, um, my dad's a missionary doctor, and he worked with other doctors as well. And so the son of this other doctor named Josh, Joshua John, um, he was a teenager at the time, and he was an artist and a motorbiker. And uh, meeting him and seeing him uh, suddenly made it a real possibility for me as a six or seven year old kid I was like wow he's doing it right now this could be me in a couple of years and so he was my first layer of inspiration and we've been friends since he's always been sort of a mentor to me um, so it's been fascinating to have that journey and have a mentor like that um, other people that inspire me I love the ethos of Chris Doe and his having built his own career, then shifting gears and saying, okay, how can I help other people achieve their dreams? I really like that approach to, to life. So he's been a great inspiration as far as it goes for the creative business. And then I, there's a whole ton of illustrators and comic book artists that I absolutely love and look up to. Um, trying to like pinpoint <laughs> a couple of them uh well from an artist perspective keith harring has been an inspiration um steve simpson here in ireland his work is amazing um steve harrington is an american artist love his work absolutely stunning macbeth was another guy whose work i love and so it was their work and their work ethic that I really enjoyed. Um, so I think overall, what inspires me is people's ability to move out of a position where maybe they don't have everything. They don't have it all at their fingertips and they had to work hard. They had to have this ethos of, of putting in blood, sweat and tears to get to the place where and the position position that they are in today and 
most of the people I look up to have gone through that journey in some way or another. Yeah, it, 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 it is striking how sometimes it's helpful in life if we can look to somebody else and say, oh, there's somebody doing it. It is possible. Yeah. That's such an important inspiration. It sort of gives you the, the belief that it's possible, I suppose. Um, you mentioned as well people like Chris Doe, and I was actually talking to um, uh, Kong Pik Lu recently, who has a fantastic job title. She's the chief design angel at her graphic design company. And she's she's been a member of that sort of Christo community for many, many years. And it, it is interesting because he really gives an awful lot back now. And he's built like this worldwide community now, which is great for creative people. That goes into maybe some of the points that you were talking to earlier, helping creatives to monetize would be the wrong word but to create a business structure and a fair value for the the creative work that they produce and I think that's a wonderful thing that Chris Doe and his team are doing there um, so thank thank you for sharing that I think there's some great examples there um, when it comes to advice though Ashwin um, have you ever had some advice that somebody shared with you that's really stuck with you that's gone to your heart where you've said you know I wish I'd have known that earlier um, or do you find yourself often sharing advice with others that you'd like to share with us today? I'm trying to think of any advice that was given me. And I'm struggling to think of an exact quote or anything like that. So I'll maybe share some thoughts or advice that I, I have given people. Um, so the, the big one for me is your value isn't in what you do, but who you are. And, and this came from a place where we as creators, as artists, as designers, most often are, are very tied together with the art that we create, right? It, it's our, our little baby, our a product that has come out from us. And so any criticism of that art, of that little baby we've produced, then becomes a criticism of ourselves. And it, it leads down a very deep, dark spiral that is unhealthy for creators. And so learning to separate yourself from who you are and knowing that you have value intrinsically uh, versus what you produce, which may be faulty and can improve, is an important step because our growth is only possible when we are able to separate ourselves and see, okay, I see your perspective. I see your point of view. Here are things that I can change. Here are things I won't change. And, you know, you have that, you're then in a position to make those choices. Whereas if every word spoken to you is a criticism to you and your art, then it's extremely hard to deal with both emotionally and um, mentally. And so that, if, if creators do nothing other than that, it'll make a huge impact on their careers. Such an important point for people in the creative field and for artists, um, because you, it, it can become self-critical and that downward spiral um, but that that little bit of separation is extremely healthy. Yeah, extremely healthy. Um, the way that you've described that you look at that um, from, from a mental perspective, from the way that you view it and how you let it um, impact you, I suppose. Um, so that that's really good advice. Thank you, Ashwin. Um, the other thing I, I want to ask you uh, before we run out of time today is, as you look at the next six to 12 months ahead, and as you as you think about where you're at now that that pivot that you kind of had a number of years ago you're kind of doing the, the work that you like to do now but are you planning three six twelve months in advance what's taking up your mental capacity what are you hoping to achieve over the sort of year ahead how how does that work for you from a planning perspective and what are you focused on usually well i have the overall vision that's the long-term goal it's it's a long game 
Uh, these sorts of things don't happen overnight. And so putting the pressure for it to happen overnight uh, is insane. And it, 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 this is what doesn't allow us to achieve our goals, or our motivation. And so I have the long-term goal of building a career as a children's book author. And so what are the steps that I need to do? Um, my hope is to publish one book a year, if possible, uh, from from a publisher and one self-published book because the self-published books really help me to uh, to produce work without any barriers you know uh, just allow my creative mind to work through it work through an idea and that often then produces more ideas of its own and so having that product that is a part of my play uh, then really impacts the rest of my career. The other thing I'm focused on, again, is a long-term goal, is to build uh, a presence on YouTube. Um, currently, uh, I just started last year because I realized that of all the different social platforms that are out there, uh, YouTube is one of the few that actually rewards its creators for the work that they create. So. Um, whatever you produce on YouTube usually has a, is evergreen content because say you produce uh, a video about habits and somebody Googles habits, your video is likely to pop up in the list of, um, of things that YouTube will recommend. And so in the long term, you're still continuing to generate wealth from something you do. And so uh, as a creator, the goal is always to produce as many um, avenues of, um, what's the word, avenues of revenue. And if the revenue is from passive income, even better, right? Yeah, it's interesting because you, you're talking about the long game, I love, which I love. Um, and it's a little bit like you were talking earlier about when you end up on stage in front of, you know, designers and it's a huge event. But what people don't maybe see is the year before where you're putting out very short clips on IGTV uh, and doing it every day and, you know, making slow progress over a period of time to get you to where you want to be. Uh, and I think that's a really important uh, point that you make in terms of the long game. Um and it also, as well, is I often talk to um, people about YouTube in depth and, you know, it's sort of often overlooked that it's the world's second largest search engine. And uh, you've just explained that very well because, you know, that evergreen content in inverted commas, that if you put stuff out there, it will get found and it will get viewed and it will get watched. And you don't need to convince everybody, but you need to find your particular audience and they will find you too. Um, yes. So yes. I think that, you know, a YouTube strategy for a creator is, it's almost a fundamental building block now, but I, I'm also amazed at how often sometimes it's overlooked initially by great creatives. And I mean, some of the world's greatest creatives. Um, I'm not, you know, there's a small segment that just don't, don't use it. And that's, that's okay. But video as a medium, I think uh, you you last year, I know, were working heavily in the video field. And uh, yeah, it does pay up and it does build a brand and it does build a channel and it does build views and it does lead to, uh, despite maybe <laughs> popular myths, it can lead to additional revenue streams. Uh, and if not, it can certainly lead to additional influences, additional connections and additional opportunities. So yeah, I think they're two great points that you've made. Well, I, like you said, if it leads to opportunity, then that is going to be another revenue stream, whether you like it or not. And uh, in the digital age that we live in, you know, uh, moving forward, I think content is going to play a vital role in, um, you know, how the world grows. Um, if you were to try and get into the oil business, now would not be a good time to get into it because that sort of era is gone. You've lost that opportunity. The next was the tech business. 
and, and so people were producing text then it was apps and now it's content so if you can get into the content game now i feel in the long term you're going to have uh, dividends come back to you because that is the latest um area for people to invest in you know so uh there's only so much land left that you can buy right but what they're investing in is people's attention so yeah i, mean, I often talk about how content drives engagement it creates movement it changes markets it changes global opinions and content can inspire um it can do an educate it can do an, a, numerous things and whether it's the written word the audio or the video uh, type of content written audio or video the power of content is such an important tool now more than ever producing good content uh, that's helping people make positive contributions i think is a is a critical critical uh, area of focus for for people and for brands uh, look the last thing before we run out of time ashwin is is there anything else that you're involved in or anything else that you want to share with our international audience before we wrap up today and also if people want to find out more about the work that you do the speaking that you do the art the illustration the graphic design work or the publishing the books where are you sending people to where's the best place to connect with you yeah, uh, so on all social media platforms, I'm at Wacko Chaco. So that's W-H-A-C-K-O-C-H-A-C-K-O. So that's on Instagram, LinkedIn, um, uh, Twitter, you name it, I'm there. Uh, <laughs> YouTube. Uh, so um, as for what's coming out this year, I have a new book launching in April with O'Brien Press, a children's book called wild city it's about children using their imagination to turn the boring exciting um i am also working on a on a self-published book that i'll be launching later this year called just start and it's to encourage creators to just start because most often we allow um our 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 self-doubt and our fears to prevent us from reaching our potential. So this book is really an encouragement to push you to get the wheels rolling so that you can achieve your dreams. Well, that's a wonderful note to end on. I'd encourage everybody to check out all the wonderful world of uh, Ashwin Chaco at wackochaco.com and uh, obviously yep. online under the same uh, name. And uh, listen, congratulations on all the success. I look forward to seeing the new books coming out. That brings us nicely to the end of the global discussion today with Ashwin. So thank you to Ashwin. Thank you to everybody for watching and listening around the world. Uh, be sure to follow, like, subscribe, do all the normal things you do with a podcast. And I'd <laughs> like you to join me back here for more discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. So thank you, Ashwin. It's been fantastic and wonderful to catch up with you again, my friend.